I'll get to those in a moment, sorry. Okay, now for the spice. So we have two nectarines chopped, two scallion chopped, and one lime juiced. To that we add one teaspoon of cumin and one teaspoon of ground ginger. And of course, as always, a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. Let's give that a, just a really, really, really quick toss here. And I want to add just a drizzle of olive oil to finish it off, just to hold it all together. And this amounts to two tablespoons right here. If you trust my spout, you've got to know your spout. But again, it's two tablespoons. So what I'll do, I'll, uh, I'll set this aside. I think I may put it in the refrigerator just to chill it. What I usually do, this, this recipe is for four pieces of fish and this will cover four pieces of fish. What I'll do, because I only have two pieces of fish for this recipe, is serve a little bit of this on the side, maybe as a cold salad. So there we go. Let's just put this in the fridge and keep it nice and cold. Let's go to an Ask the Chef question here, then I'll go out, I'll check my tuna, probably turn it over and get that last five minutes. Cook time on the other side. Oh, this is from Madeline in Rochester Hills. Don, what is the key to making fluffy pancakes? Well, Madeline, the key to a fluffy pancake is to separate the yolk from the white. Make your recipe with the baking powder, the baking soda, the two cups of flour, the buttermilk, the butter. Put your two egg yolks in there, mix it up, and then separate the whites. Take those whites to stiff peaks and fold those into your pancakes. That will give you 10 to 15 to maybe 20% more volume. That will give you a nice fluffy pancake. And, and thank you so much for your question. I'd like to go outside now and see what's happening on the grill. I feel like I'm going through the kitchen and into the woods, but I'm not going to grandmother's house. Let's see what we're doing here. Oh yeah, very nice. If you'll notice, this is cooked halfway because we have cooked around the edges and, and a little opaque in the center. Very nice. Again, if, if you were one of this medium rare, it's ready now. But for our purposes, I think I'll turn this down to low. For our purposes, it's medium well, so five more minutes and that's done. Back into the kitchen. While our tuna is finishing on the grill, let's make Tuscan coleslaw. Again, we have the wet ingredients and we have dry ingredients. We'll put the dry ingredients into a bowl. This right here is a 12 ounce bag of slaw mix. To that, I'd like to add one half cup of thinly sliced red onion. One tablespoon of tarragon. Yes, Don loves tarragon. I like all herbs. And one tablespoon of a fresh jalapeno minced. I did not dice this yet, mince it up, because I wanted to show you how to work with a jalapeno. Just cut your top off. The secret is to control and temper your heat by taking out the membrane and the seeds. And just a, a quick clean like this. Half of this jalapeno is one tablespoon. And we don't want a lot of heat in this, just enough so that your guests know that, uh, that they're alive and well and enjoying a delicious meal. So let's, uh, let's mince that up. Yeah. What happens with jalapeno is that the juices release when they're in the recipe and over time it'll get hotter and hotter and hotter. So if you make this coleslaw and a couple hours later you'll get twice the heat that you will out of these jalapeno peppers that we're using right now. But you can see a nice fine mince so nobody gets a lethal dose of a jalapeno at one time. That's good. Yeah, I like that. We'll save this for later. Okay. Now for the vinaigrette part. 
quite simply, it's, it's just a, an Italian vinaigrette. That's all we're using. That's why it's a Tuscan coleslaw, oil and vinegar based. You see, we have a wet paper towel to put our bowl on so the, the spinning is minimal. We're not doing any magic tricks here. We're trying to cook so we don't need any accidents. So to this, we'll add four tablespoons of red wine vinegar. Of course, we're going to put the olive oil in last because we like to emulsify that, which is incorporated slowly so it doesn't separate. Now, you're familiar with the, with the Don Glee's tablespoon of Dijon mustard, right? That's it. One teaspoon of granulated garlic, the powder, if you'd like. You can use regular garlic. Uh, for this application, I prefer the garlic powder. It seems to disperse a little better. Of course, a teaspoon of salt and the classic teaspoon of pepper. Let's give that a quick stir. And to that, I'm going to add one third cup of extra virgin olive oil. Again, slowly emulsify it. It's, it's better to establish your vinaigrette separately from the coleslaw. That way you make sure all the flavors come together and you're not just mixing, like I said earlier, willy-nilly. So here we go. Just a light, very simple, slow emulsification. We're going to toss this, put that on the platter, bring the tuna in, tent that a little bit, and rest it. Enjoy our last question and serve that nectarine salsa. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful day. Perfectly emulsified, not separated. That's it. We'll just add this to our coleslaw. Give it a light toss. The thing about coleslaw, when you get it wet, it reduces in size. You seem to have half the yield that you started out with. So this right here is about a six-person recipe, depending, of course, on how hungry for coleslaw they are. I'll use my paper towel again. See it getting wet? See how it's reducing in size? So we shin it up with about, just about half the volume or so that we started out with. This is, this is really delicious. Of course, I also like a really good buttermilk coleslaw dressing. But since our, our recipe for the nectarine salsa was so healthy, I thought I'd complement that health with, with this good health. And there we are. Whoops, look at that. Looks like the cabbage got loose there. Okay. So that's got a good mix on it. Let's just put it here on our, on our platter. Let's do this. Let's make it a little fancy. There we go. Of course, we'll put our, our tuna in the center there. And then we'll put salsa over it on either side. Let's go to our question. This is from Dallas in Denver. His question is, Don, I love cooking Southwestern cuisine. Two common ingredients for this style of cooking are roasted peppers and roasted garlic. Presently, I'm purchasing the jarred variety of both these items. How do I roast peppers and garlic? Well, Dallas and Denver, thank you for your question. We'll start with the garlic. That's simple. What you do, you put your oven on 350 degrees, take a small baking dish, sprinkle, drizzle some olive oil on the bottom, take your bulb of garlic, and cut about one quarter of the top off so the cloves are exposed. Cook it at that temperature for approximately an hour. When the garlic is roasted, it will pop up out of the top of the bulb, the cloves will. That is roasted garlic. Now for the peppers, as an example, we'll, we'll roast a red bell pepper, either on your grill outside on medium heat 
or a grill pan on medium heat on top of your stove. Take the pepper, put just a little bit of olive oil on it, very, very small amount, and roast it at 350 at a, at a medium temperature, 10 minutes a side. When it's charred black, turn it to the next side, the next side, the next side. W within 40 minutes or so, you should have a roasted pepper. Bring it back in the house, put it in a Ziploc bag in about three quarters seal it. Let it vent a little bit and within 30 minutes after that the skin will separate that blackened skin from the flesh and you'll have a smoky smoke roasted pepper. And thank you again for your question. Let's go outside now. Let's, let's take that tuna off the grill. It's ready. Oh, here we go. Three minutes from delicious. Let's turn this off. I'm confident that it's ready. Oh, it is. Oh yeah, that's a perfect, perfect medium well. Just, uh, just like my guests like. Mmm. Okay, back in the kitchen. Let's, let's plate this, put nectarine salsa on top, and serve. Oh, look at that. That just showed me it's perfectly medium well. Okay. Set this over here. Okay, let's give this a quick stir. Want to make sure you get all the spices and all the oils off the side as well. It's perfect. Wow. That's drama. That's for effect. Let's put a little salsa right there. Let's put a little salsa here and a little there and maybe just a little bit on top of the fish. And then what I have here, I have a little wash at the bottom, which is good. It's going to add to the moisture of the fish. But that's it. That's our tuna with the nectarine salsa and the Tuscan coleslaw. So let's put it on the flavor wave, shall we? Hmm. What first? Well, let's grab a little coleslaw here, just a spoonful. And let's. Let's take this little wedge right here with a little bit of that salsa. Just a little more salsa. Yeah, how about a little more? Yeah, that's it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please gra grab your stopwatches. Let me try the Tuscan coleslaw first. Mmm. Fresh. Alive with the tarragon. Very nice. That onion helps as well. I used a high quality extra virgin olive oil. That, that brilliance, that brightness is coming through. Very, very nice. I'm going to stay on that flavor wave and switch to another one here. Let's try the tuna with the nectarine salsa. Mmm. Very nice. The lime with the cumin. The sweetness of the nectarine. Mmm. Oh. The, the freshness, the sweetness, the juiciness of the tuna. Nothing bad here. This is delicious. Again, I've got competing flavor waves. It's, it's almost too much for me. It's probably safer if I get off camera. So it's your kitchen, it's your life. Ride the flavor wave. Eat delicious, live splendiferous. Thank you.